Episode 3 of Star Wars, Obi-Wan Kenobi Vader is both menacing and vulnerable in this week's Obi-Wan Kenobi. While the visuals in Part 3 aren't always perfect, the battle between Obi-Wan and Vader reintroduces traditional Star Wars thrills. Obi characterization Wands shines brightly in this episode, as evidenced by his actions as much as by his words. Even when confronted with his former friend-turned-enemy, he's intent on escaping and hiding. This Obi-Wan is also not the same Obi-Wan who referred to blasters as uncivilized. His casual readiness to wield a gun for filthy methods demonstrates how deeply he has sunk from Jedi awe. When Han conveys what the Force feels like to Leia, he gets a flicker of optimism. It's a lovely depiction that effectively establishes a contrast between the two individuals. Leia still believes in the goodness of humans. While Obi-Wan will probably absorb some of that optimism from the series, it's still a welcome element to the dynamic. Leia's appearance also contributes to the show's feeling of continuity with the original trilogy. In this performance, Vivian Lyra Blair continues to shine. Vader, though, is unavoidably the star of this episode. The armoring scenario provides visual detail unequaled by the dull dialogue in the chat between him and Reva, thus his presence isn't all that frightening at first. He's blazing on all cylinders by the time he confronts Obi-Wan. When delivering the villain's threats, James Earl Jones sounded almost exactly like he did 40 years ago. It's almost as though Jones' voice hasn't aged at all, which is a treat whether or not it's thanks to Disney audio magic. Some of the action is murky, too sterile and dismal to reach the heights of the original trilogy, which has been often imitated. I found the opening of the Vader duel, in particular, to be distractingly dark until the lightsabers were lighted. The tableau gets its gloom after the two great foes are cast in neon. The fight seems like a living movie poster because of the colors, which are classic Star Wars imagery. It screams out for fan art. Then, with the gold of the fire Vader threw Obi-Wan into, filmmaker Deborah Chow goes for the kill. If there was any doubt that this episode was a revenge of the Sith Redux, it's now gone, with shots of Anakin burning in front of Obi-Wan. Vader's clever, ironic cruelty restores him to his rightful place as a great movie monster. There's also some fantastic direction elsewhere. The cuts between Reva and Vader provide the impression that the heroes are completely encircled. Reva's footsteps as she approaches Leah's hiding place are matched by a brief beat in Natalie Holt's soundtrack. The Inquisitor's squabbles are still a staple of the show. We don't learn much more about Reva's objectives in this episode. Instead, the script nicely explains how the Inquisitors are all vying for Vada's tremendous favor. If you like our content, please like and subscribe, and do watch out for more.